This is the first time that I'm doing this here, and uh, I'm really nervous. And I'm talking about emotional intelligence. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So just bear with me, and uh, if I'm brave enough, uh, we're gonna get through this. Sure. Oh, yeah. Whoops. oh, I'll explain that to you. <laughs> uh, right. So uh, basically, what I want to talk about is why emotional intelligence is so is very important for leaders and along with IQ, how it can be a powerful tool, right? Uh, why it's important and uh, what I do in order to try to improve my EQ as much as, as possible. And, uh, and also, you know, stuff that I've been uh, researching, there are certain systems that can even go beyond and apply uh, some of these techniques to the whole organization. And that's it. And that to an end, right? So, just a little bit about myself. I, I'm from Brazil. I came to Canada back in 2008. Uh, I joined, rejoined that center in October 2008. And everybody remembers what happened in September, but some, somehow I got a job, which is good. Uh, but then, uh, a few years later, I joined uh, the, comp the, the, uh, the company that is currently called Verde. That's what I'm at now. Uh, I became the back-end architect of their, their product, and it was the front-end architect. So we worked together a lot. Uh, and then back in 2015, uh, that's when I became a team lead for the first time, and it was like just like you know the developer was kind of like yeah lead a team or I'll find someone else who will. So I said all right, why not? But I kind of liked it, so that's why I started to uh, you know I I researched a little bit about it. Um, to the fun facts, I my own my own beer, and after being I'm getting sick and tired of being screwed by banks. I decided to convert my own uh, <laughs> finances and investment. All right, so let's start with uh, definitions here. So, what is a leader in the first place, right? And I did some research. I got some pieces here and there, and all of that. Uh, now, the interesting thing is that uh, some leaders they actually manage to, you know. Uh, lead people that are actually even more intelligent than them, right? So, how, how does that happen? Is it just because of experience or because of the fact that they know a little bit more about the technology? Uh, yes, but, uh, but I think that there is more to that, right? Like, there are certain situations in which you kind of you face problems, and I think that true leaders are able to manage. Uh, you know, keep their cool and manage the situation and get to the other side, take the team, uh, bring the team along and get to the other side. So there's a little bit of like an emotional aspect to it. Right? And then there's that. Uh, you know, during my, my professional career, I came across two types of supervisors, right? One of them uh, is that kind that, you know, will say, all right, if you need like you, you have to, to, to you know, there, there's a crunch phase. There's a uh, tight deadlines. We've always, well, we've all been through through it right? Like you have to work until eight, nine, ten, and then you know the supervisor uh, just shows up and says, "Hey, um, if you need anything, just let me know, and I'll get it back to you." Right? And then they take off and go go have dinner with uh, with their family. Right? So. And you're there, stuck, right? Feeling all along. But on the flip side, there are also like those those who are basically willing to, to go beyond, sit down with you, and say, "Hey, uh, do you need anything? Do you want, do you want me to do QA? Do you want me to to cope? Uh, do whatever, and, and and basically sit down with you." So there are two differences there, right? But you've got to remember that uh, in one case, you might get some results, but you may end up with a rotten apple in your basket. On the other hand, you have people who are like not feeling alone and abandoned, and they know 
and they can see that there, there is someone that's trying to take care of them, right? So it's a big business. Uh, and you gotta remember that uh, we react to emotions on, on a daily basis, right? So that's why it's, it's important. And, the, and these reactions can be beneficial or they can be detrimental, right? And also the way that you react may trigger other reactions to other people, right? So, so that's, that's why it's, uh, it's so important. I love that sentence over there. Um, it's because it's so true, right? How many times, you know, you remember something that happened, but you don't remember what you were told, but you remember how you felt, right? So, it's a big, uh, emotions, emotions play a big role on, on our daily life, and on, on how we deal with people, how we perform work. And, uh, you know, emotions uh, drive people and people drive performance. And if you still don't believe me, just ask those two guys, right? Uh, I, I digress a, li a little bit here. I'm not talking about leadership, but if you have another reason why it's so important to think about emotions, right? So how come that Warren Buffett, I know he's a smart guy, very wise, but he was able to make billions of dollars, whereas the great Sir Isaac Newton, he lost in the stock market equivalent to $20 million in today's money, right? Well, the thing is that Warren Buffett, my, my, my hypothesis is that uh, Warren Buffett, uh, he knows that markets are not efficient, that they actually reek of fear and greed, and he is an absolute master in capital, capitalizing that. So, yet another reason why it's, uh, it's important to, 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 to be, you know, aware of your, your emotions. So, if I was able to convince you guys, uh, I, the next question is, okay, so how do, do I make sure that I'm always improving my EQ, right? And uh, the answer is, well, educate yourself, right? So, that's what I did. And while doing some research, I came across these two books, right? Like, and, and I really enjoyed re uh, reading those, and that's why I kind of wanted to talk about about them. Uh, has anyone read uh, *At the Heart of Leadership* from Joshua Friedman? No. What about *The Chin Paradox*? Oh, you read this that one, right? All right. So you know that I'm not even scratching the surface here, right? Like there's a lot to read about in uh, these books, but, the, but they're awesome. Um, so, but the backbone of the... technical difficulties. Uh, the backbone is going to be the heart of leadership, but I kind of like I'm drawing, I'm drawing parallels here with uh, the Chim Paradox because they, they have a lot of things in common. So, and they have a, a lot of good analogies. So the first step is basically be aware of your emotions, like recognize your, your patterns, right? Know yourself, right? So Dr. Peters, uh, he uses this very nice uh, analogy, and he breaks the, the, the mind down into, into three main categories, right? So the frontal lobe is the, the rational side, is the IQ side, and he, it's uh, basically the, the human, it's, it's, uh, it's us, right? But you gotta remember that everybody has also the limbic system, and the lim limbic system is what he calls the chin, all right? Uh, now, it, the chin is basically five times stronger and faster than, than the human, okay? And the reason why it's like that is because it's a survival mechanism. Uh, all these stimuli that, is, that are coming from, from outside uh, your brain is wired in such a way that all the stimuli is, actually is goes to the limbic system first, and then control is the, might be delegated to the frontal lobe, or it stays in uh, 
in, in the limbic system, depending on the reactions. So one example is, okay, um, we're talking about, I don't know, like some algorithm, right? Well, the, the chimp doesn't, doesn't have anything to do with that, so it just delegates control to you know, the, the frontal lobe. But what if you're walking down the street and then all of a sudden, like, you know, some angry dog shows up and starts, you know, growling? Right, so that's when when the chimp takes over because it need it wants to survive, right? Uh, but again, uh, it's uh, it, it always uh, it's five times stronger, so it, it always takes uh, the it always takes control when when it deems necessary. Now the computer is is uh, responsible for your memory, your experiences, and automatic behavior. And it's the fastest of all. It's like 20 times faster than a human, four times faster than the, uh, the, uh, the chimp, okay? Now, also another thing that we have to be aware of is the number of feelings that, that we have and, and, and how these feelings can be combined and they can even escalate. So, for instance, you know, from annoyance, you can escalate to anger, and anger even to rage, right? So, very important to, to also be aware of of the fact that uh, whatever emotion that you're feeling might might be escalating. So, because of the, the, the because of that, you have to rec recognize the, the 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 patterns of your emotions and and, and feelings. So in my example, for instance, and now knows that, I know that I kind of feel a lot of frustration, right? Because especially as an architect, I design like, you know, I set all these design patterns and I'm expecting people to apply those patterns and when they don't, then I feel, well, come on, like, well, what the hell? Why, why, are you not, why are you not applying my design patterns? And even worse, why, why are you applying my anti patterns? <laughs> I just said uh, I just wrote this because I like, didn't have any time, and all of a sudden, like you know, that pops up everywhere, right? <laughs> so uh, I had to, to to basically recognize this and become aware of it. Okay, so so that's the first step. Now the second step is basically how you choose to, to, to react because once again the reactions that you have might influence other people so that's why it's so important. Now coming back to the, uh, to the champ analogy, uh, the thing is the, the, well, the chimp is always going to, to, to respond first, right? And the chimp's main agenda is survival, right? And based on that, uh, it may or may not take control. So now it's that's why it's important for you to to kind of make sure that you upload good behavior, aka autopilots, to to your computer, so that over time you build that experience, so that every time that the chimp reacts, it accesses that database and goes, okay, I've seen this before then I can delegate to, to either the, the humor or, or the computer, especially when there is, a, you know, like a, a, a dispute or a problem that you have to face with uh, the people that, that we're dealing with. Um, and again, since our first response is, is, is always emotional, that's the reason why you know, people who ask you to ten, like uh, to to count to ten or something like that. It's because you know you kind of are giving time for for the the chimp to to calm down, and then finally control is given to to the human. Uh, sometimes it might even have to take longer than that. So Dr. Uh, Peter also talks about exercising the chimp, which means. Even going somewhere else, uh, talking about the problem with uh, to to a friend, you know, in a different location. That's that's very normal. It's a, it's a normal response from 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 our brain, but it's very important that it's done in a totally different context, right? Once that is done, then you know the chimp calms down, and then you can come back 
and uh, and deal with the situation. So one of the examples is if one of the your team members does not meet a deadline, for instance, right? Yeah. So make sure that uh, you're going when you're giving feedback, you're bringing your human to the conversation because the last thing that you want to do is to bring your chimp, right? Uh, and also make sure that uh, the, 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 the reactions that you're causing on your team member also brings the human and, and not the gym. Um, and also re always remember, so that slide always uh, reminds me of uh, what, what Joe Granger used to say, at the end of the day, the bottom line is it's all about positivity, right? Um, always remember that uh, everything that, uh, that you do, all the, the roadblocks that you overcome, they are a lesson that is learned, right? So it's something that, uh, that you know, you're always building up that, that experience. So, so always uh, exercise that optimism. And, uh, and also, also everything, every, every obstacle that, that you overcome also gets you closer to, to reach your long-term goals, right? So, uh, so always keep that motivation up. All remembering that uh, you're getting always getting closer to, to your goals. Because when you do that, that's when you finally, you know, become the one, right? So this, this is where you separate the leaders from, from the children. Um, now, leaders, they go beyond and they have even more attributes, right? Uh, Sometimes it's uh, it's good to kind of forget about the all the deadline, the expectations from the, the the client, and you have to remember that we are all human, and we all have families, we all have bills to pay, we all have problems, personal problems that we deal with, right? So, always like when when you're talking about uh, you know about a problem to one of your team members. Just, just remember that you know. To always ask first: Is there is 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 everything okay? I mean, are you? Do you need some help? Do you need some more time? And stuff like that, because you know they might be dealing with uh, with personal problems and you don't even know about. It. Okay. And uh, and leaders, they also have like that uh, that long term. Go in mind, they always have a sense of purpose. This is what Simon Sinek calls the why. Uh, you know, Joshua Friedman calls it uh, the noble goal, and I like to call it the, my, my mission. And that's my mission, that's the one that I put, put in my resume. Um, again, coming back uh, to when I started become when I became a team lead, I noticed that I I always like to, to like well, it's some, I, love, I like to, to, to teach. It's something that I really enjoy doing. And uh, so and it, it's not in a classroom kind of way, but it's like hands-on, you know day to day, uh, you know uh, explaining things to, to people, drawing uh, diagrams and stuff like that, right? So I, and it's kind of like one, it's, it's something that I want to do for the rest of my career. Um, and everybody should define, also define their core values, and which is very important because uh, if your core values, once you, you know about them, you have to also compare with uh, the core values of your company and see if they match or if they are if they are compatible. Uh, that's that's when you well, because when they are that's when you find out that uh, you are working for a great company you really enjoy doing that uh, and you always want to work there and you have a sense of purpose you want to make a change. Okay. Um, so Dr. Friedman also finally he he has a system in place that uh, that again goes beyond 
And uh, he, he applies this not only from an individual perspective, but also from a, uh, a whole organization perspective so to define, uh, you know, how, how the company is doing from a customer, uh, customer service perspective, productivity and, and retention, okay? So this is uh, something that I would uh, recommend you guys reading a little bit about. But uh, one more thing that I would like to say is is this uh you business owners out there just make sure that your employees are well taken care of because if you do they will take care of your customers and finally um i i'm going to give one of simon sinek's example here like when he talks about the marines uh, when he asks uh any one of the, the, the members of, of the Marines, why would you risk your life in order to save uh, someone else's? The, the answer is basically the same, because that person would do the same for me, right? And this is what, what trust is all about. It's something that is, is so fragile and yet so powerful. It's like so hard to gain, to earn. It's actually earned, right? And you have to earn respect even before you earn uh, trust. But uh, when when uh, when you finally earn that, uh, then then you can do beautiful things. I mean, we don't have to go to the extreme of like going behind enemy lines, but uh, but the path of uh, of a, a person who joins a company starts with skepticism, right? Like, okay, so this is the new guy, but then uh, as you're showing all your skills, like your IQ skills, then that's uh, when people realize, okay, uh, this guy is on top of his uh, of their game, this his game, he knows well what he's talking about, until you get to the point that, that uh, you say, okay, uh, when there's a problem and people need help, and then you say, okay, uh, don't worry about it, man, I got your back, I'll help you out, and that's when uh, when you uh, the, that that uh, link of trust finally emerges. Um, and uh, when when your your organization as a whole, when when uh, employees they trust the, the 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 leadership and they trust each other, that's when you get optimal performance. And uh, that's it. You guys have any questions? Uh, I mean, Tim, Tim doesn't want to answer, but you can ask. Uh, you can ask the human. Well, uh, no, as you mean as a business owner, right? I think it trickly, it kind of trickles down, right? Because, it, but it's from from a, a, a different level. Uh, I've seen cases of of um, again uh, watching like one of some some of Simon Sinek's uh, videos, right? He, he talks about that. He talks about you know uh, all managers are basically they they, they don't really care. They they really uh, ask the, the the employees how they're doing if they're being taken care of and all of that. When you when you uh, think about uh, the structure of, of organization, what what I think happens is the people that are being led, if they feel that uh, they are being well taken care of and they trust the the or management or leadership, they will do the same to the people that they supervise. Does it make sense? Yeah. Any other questions? I mean, at least I've got 
Yeah, so, and I'm going to, to mention Simon Sinek yet, yet again because they watched the video where he talks about that. He was talking about shareholder supremacy and stuff like that, right? So that, that is a concept that came around like back in the 80s. And I guess it's getting to the point that we're pushing a little bit like back a little bit on, on that because this whole, uh, this whole thing about uh, you know, trust and uh, employees being well taken care of in the context of this, you know, uh, shareholder supremacy just doesn't work. Because it's not, it can't be just, the, the, the results are basically high performance results, they're just a byproduct of a well, kind of, uh, a, a healthy environment. If you have a manager that feels like emotional, do you think it's worth working on that? Or is it that difficult to get a question about the girl we have to do? Well, again, a good chat is, is always good, right? Like, well, one thing that I would say, well, it's, it's kind of hard like, to present a board and say, well, but maybe. Uh, you could even say, hey, I'm reading about this, and you know, just as, a, as an excuse to, to present something like that, that to them. Uh, the worst case scenario is look back at your core values and breathe, think hard on, on it and see if they match, because maybe they don't. And in that case, you know, there are so many other great places to, to work out there. Well, um, when it comes to to like even the uh, the employees kind of uh, outperforming out you and stuff like that, I think it's it's a very healthy uh, way. Like you can you can handle you can be competitive and empathetic at the same time, right? Uh, it's kind of like the good the good uh, sense of, of competition. So on one hand, the better that people perform, like the easier your life is, and at the same time, it kind of like gives you that motivation that pushes pushes you forward as well, right? I mean, because someone is beating you, you want to. You want to outperform that person as well, right? So it's kind of like gonna get you out of the comfort zone, sort of. I think it's. Um, I think in management science today, emotional intelligence is really gaining steam. But uh, most companies, even though they the leaders recognize the importance, there isn't. I don't see a lot of effort um, from an organization from the standpoint of emphasizing the importance of EQ or supporting employees and in increasing their EQ. So what are some ways do you think that organizations who are serious about uh, improving their employees' EQ and their managers' EQ, what are some ways that they can support um, and help improve the EQ of their employees and leaders? Yeah, so uh, it, it, it's one of the reasons why um, I'm kind of like talking about this. It's because I also want to raise awareness. Because uh, people, some people don't even know that EQ is, is, is a thing, right? So my recommendation is like read one of those books, try to, to learn about that. There are certain organs, like Friedman's organizations called Six Seconds. They, they actually uh, have a well-defined structure where they can bring consultants to, to, to help out. And they go through the whole three steps. Uh, they, they, they go through the, the, the metrics and they, uh, the metrics and, and they help out, you know, even assess 
how the company, the, the company is, is doing. Okay. Yeah, there's a, that's a good question. As a matter of fact, I was saving that for last. If no one asked that, I would ask that, that question myself. Uh, yes, just like IQ, uh, they developed a way to to uh, come up with like a, an IQ, uh, EQ level based on those uh, competencies that, that, I, that I put there. So they give scores to each one of those competencies and they come up with a, with a final number. Uh, it's, it's my book. I, I didn't do it. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, good. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So that's the end of our talks. Please uh, stick around. Uh, speakers are still here. If you have any other questions, Mingo Network, there's some drawings in the back, and maybe some stacks. There's Paul Thomas, we'll see you over there. So uh, thank you all for coming out. Hope you had a good time, and uh, we learned something new today.